uh, my, my first thought was well, yung when I saw the news is we called it again. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Bolero. Sam here with Gab and Maui. Hello, guys. Yeah. Eh, what news? Wala news. Thank you, so much Sam, for shadow announcing. <laughs> oh, oh nga, oh nga, oh nga. Wala tayong masadong news ngayon. But we are still doing an episode. So nabanggit mo na Gab. One of the first things we're going to talk about: FEU. Hiring a new coach. So it's going to be Sean Chambers for the upcoming season. But Coach Denok Miranda will be st- will still be staying, heading, I think, the basketball program of FEU and helping um, their players transition from the junior league to the seniors team. No, So Denok Miranda still staying with FEU. But itong Sean Chambers news, uh, not necessarily new news kasi Maui, I think, you mentioned this or you talked about this with um, Nabs, pute- uh, with Sean Chamb- Chambers potentially going to FEU. And I think a lot of our listeners or commenters have mentioned this sort of um, rumor from before. So, medyo napag-usapan na to. But uh, now that it's confirmed, uh, what are your instant reactions? Will this help FEU get back on track and get back to their winning ways and reach the Final Four? Maui, since ikaw yung unang nagbanggit nito, why don't we start with you? Yeah, uh, I think positive development naman uh, overall yung pagpasok to Sean Chambers. Especially that Denok Miranda is still gonna be part in some capacity. Uh, I think Kimi ni Gab, actually all three of us have been saying this nung season 86. Uh, FEU, when they went to Denok Miranda, seemed like a move into, initially was a move to a different direction, but it didn't pan out nung season 86. They were basically playing the same way as we mentioned during our episodes during season 86. And I think uh, the signing or them getting Sean Chambers, somebody is completely out of the loop, completely out of the program, is a welcome sight for FEU just because it's going to be really something new. Uh, when I was talking to Navs during one of the episodes nung nag ako sa kanya, uh, one of the things that he mentioned was yung key to getting Sean Chambers was unlocking yung, yung contacts niya abroad. Uh, I think that will be key for FEU. Uh, the recruiting here in the Philippines, especially yung the national players here locally, have been very expensive, to say the least, and hard for, for a lot of teams. <laughs> expensive diba? is the right word. <laughs> ba? I mean, let's be direct about it. Uh, I think even Ateneo has decided to go into a different route when it comes to recruiting. Uh, and FEU getting an, a, a, a name uh, with the caliber of Sean Chambers. Uh, and the contacts. I think si Naveen mentioned this during the episode. He has a lot of fill am contacts that he can potentially recruit and use uh, for the future to build up FEU. Uh, the question now is, uh, will Alaska step in and also be a partner of FEU? Uh, Good point. I think we all know he played of, for Alaska, di ba? Yeah, he played for Alaska. He was one of the top imports in PBA history. And uh, this is, uh, I'm, I'm talking about this because this is something that Navs also said during the episode. Uh, is it Sean Chambers plus Alaska or will it only be Sean Chambers? But overall, I think very positive news for me. Maybe this is the right time for FU to really rebuild the right way. Some of their top players we've discussed in previous episodes have also decided to step away from the program and transfer or go pro. So ito talaga yung fresh start that they were looking potentially siguro nung season 86. Any thoughts, Gab? Uh, my, my first thought was well, yung when I saw the news is we called it again! <laughs> Much like this good list, Luis Pablo. Yung, hindi ko may crystal ball ng ulo ko eh. Tapos yung, yung pang nirarub ko siya, uh, nagiging predicted of, o yung of the future eh. <laughs> so, we've been saying this in the whole season 86 that I think, na, I think when we were talking about this, I think one of the our heated questions or burning questions after the first round is, who's a coach on the hot seat? And, Yes, I know. Sam, Sammy was shocked. 
na sinabi ko, I'm gonna say it's Denok Miranda. Yeah. And you, yeah. it was some Denok Miranda. First year. Visibly yeah. shocked. <laughs> because as Maui said, I was pretty disappointed with how Denok Miranda was coaching FEU despite beating Ateneo which Sam reminded about in the previous episode. <laughs> Twice. Twice <huh? laughs> but at that time, Maui, they had, they had only beaten Ateneo once. So at the end of the first round. But despite Ateneo, I was pretty disappointed with how they performed because they were essentially playing the same way with the same players. And I didn't like that because uh, we all knew that the system with the same players did not produce a fourth in 85. So why was Denok Miranda being in the same thing, doing the same thing in season 86? Uh, uh, I love this move. Again, I was not a fan of Denok Miranda and how he coached. I'm happy that he's still on the coaching staff. At least they did you know, purely take him out. Like, no, you're not... You're still part of the system, so uh, you're, just, you're still part of the coaching staff. So I think that's a good thing. Uh, as for Sean Chambers, I think I've talked about this previously. Let's see. I'm not sure what his coaching style is, which is what his playbook is. Maybe he runs something similar to a triangle since he was under Tim Cohn for quite a long time. Uh, let's see, you know. Uh, hopefully, a, a, a ton more ball movement, less isolation, you know, no, no, those driving kick and a, a, a lot of driving kick, you know, and hopefully he develops the young guys because he has a lot of talented young players on this team. I hope they respond to him. I, I hope they learn. I hope they develop together. Uh, wait and see. So, for me, in the upcoming Pinoy Liga tournament which starts on a which starts on April six, where you we're gonna be watching that, and I hope you too. FU is gonna be one of the teams I want to watch. Uh, they're young. I assume a lot of their pieces for season eighty seven are gonna participate in preseason tournaments or the come fill all tournament. If ever there's gonna be one, well, I'm ninety nine percent sure there's, you know, there's gonna be one. Uh, I want to watch FEU. There, this is one of the teams I really want to watch. I want I want to see what system they run. I want to see how the young guys perform, how they play together, and sino pa yung ibang hugots na meron sila. Hindi na nopo pwede yung mga FEU uh, high school players lang, de ba? Kasi they're not enough to fill a team. So I'm sure there are others. Who is their FSA, de ba? Sino or sino mga prospective FSAs nila? Uh, we're coming off a Mo Fatty season, so I'm 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 nowhere to go but up from that. <laughs> I think we've been uh, seeing that the whole season, diba? No word to go. Oh, so, to, go oh, to us and to our subscribers with this development, definitely FU is a, is a team to watch in the preseason. And we'll be covering it and I'll be very interested to see how they form. So, wait. A uh, quick question. Uh, with the news so far, with everything that we've heard so far from FU, mm, what are your expectations for season 87? I mean, maraming no alam players. So what are we expecting from this FEU team? Are we hyped? Are we hyping up the fans? Marami tayong FEU listeners, by the way. So what, what will you tell the FEU listeners, Cap? Uh, easy lang. Easy lang. Yun lang. Chill lang kayo. Do not expect instant success. Again, this is a young team. A lot. Talent-wise, I think they have a lot. But they're young. You know, so growing pains. You no, know? I think uh, if you get to the final four, I think you you get you take that as a win. Or if, even if you fight for a final four slot, I think you take that as a win. If I was an FEU fan, uh, don't expect uh, FEU to be a contender this season. But look for signs of development. Signs that hey, there's something going on, and we're on the up. Gonna be a contender in the future. So you know something. To watch for if I'm an FEU fan, even if I'm not an FEU fan, even oh, you Ateneo fan, oh, pero manunod ako FEU to see how how they develop. Like, uh, are these young guys the real deal? So, uh, as if I if I were to make a giddy up power rankings, you like we did yung last season, siguro I would put them five or six or no 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 seven or eight pala. Ah, six or seven, six or seven, eight. 
I'll, I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt that they're eight. <laughs> but, nah, but, okay. but six or seven, I'll probably put FE there. Uh, depending on what I see from the likes of the other teams, such as Adamson and Young and UST and Ateneo, who are you know gonna fight for that final four contention. But uh, let's see, Young. Let's see what FE has. Okay, sorry. Just to, ano, hindi ko, I can't let that go, Gab. Kasi yung UE, maraming magagalit. Kasi marami tayong UE fans. And they're saying, um, I'm seeing a lot of people say na you should watch out for the Team B of UE. They do have players that are up and coming daw from there. So, we'll see. We'll see. They might surprise us again for the so, third time see. in a row. They, they lost Remogat. The so... Remogat. They lost to the Mogat, so I think they could give me a pass for saying that oh, yeah. I'm giving them the so, benefit of a doubt that they're. My basis, na man, de ba? My basis, ma- man. But yeah, I agree. Malay mo, ah, mo yeah, malay yeah. mo next season, may may parang really Mogat alit, de ba? I mean, exactly, if, exactly. If but there's I, a coach I, that can surprise us, it's Coach Jack. Si coach with Jack. all the off court yeah, and the on court. <laughs> but I do agree. But I do agree with you, Gap. No, dun sa sinabi mo about FU. Uh, take it easy lang. They have to remember na this is their third coach in the last three seasons. Diba? They had Rasela two seasons ago, um, then Miranda, and now si Sean Chambers. So it's it's very difficult to expect um, a championship agad or even a final four from like a new coach after three seasons. But I think this is really good timing and it's good that they were able to do it this early. Why? Because... We're going to talk about some of the high school stars later, but we haven't really heard a lot from like FEU high school stars or FEU high school players lately. And napag usapan natin na um, part of like building a winning culture is the coach. The coach, their system, and the, the culture that they will, you know, um, introduce to the team. Diba? So at least they have that set. It's sort of like how La Salle did it last year where very very early in the season coach Topex Robinson let's let's get started diba? and that's sort of how things started for th- things started to parang build up for Lasal they got the coach then they recruit the player so hopefully with the with the recruitment of um coach Sean Chambers as part of FU now they can focus he he can focus and the management can focus on Finally, recruiting the players and getting the team ready for the upcoming season. So I think um, they have to manage their expectations, but definitely good news for FEU. So let's move on to the next topic. So Maui, naha boleros blue ka, seems like an Ateneo color. So let's talk about Ateneo this time. Uh, Gab Gomez has decided to uh, leave early or leave the team already and go Pro, I think from what we're hearing is he is joining an MPBL team. So is my question to you guys, let's start with Gab. Um is this how so how big of an impact is Gab Gomez leaving for Ateneo? And uh was this sort of unexpected to you or did you expect this? Well, I'll answer the second question that you posed, Sam, first. Uh, unexpected, yes. I thought that he would definitely stay. He announced after season uh, 86 that he was deaf, he, that, that he was going to come back for season 87. Uh, as for the impact with the way Coach Tab ran the rotation, or well, ran the point guard spot, the point guard rotation last season, I'm sad to say that this is not going to have that, that big of an impact in terms of the overall team construction of Ateneo. Because Coach Tab preferred playing uh, Ian Espinosa, Jared Brown over Gab Gomez. And with the entry of a talent such as Jared Bahay, who I expect to start, uh, God forbid na si Ian, Ian Espinosa ang start ni Coach Tab, but uh, given, you know, all the signs and the talent that that came in. I don't. I think Gab Gomez is was bound to become the third string point guard again for next season, and I think he saw that as well, which is why he left. The uh, he committed, but you know, with with the news that he saw, hey, Jared Bay is coming. I don't. I don't think I'm getting any minutes. Uh, this was a move 
that suited Gab Gomez. He's already old. What? He's 23, 24? I, I really? think he's 24. Yeah, he's 24. He's 24. Right? Yeah, he already finished college in, I think, in Italy. He came in as a master's student. So I, so he's pretty up there in age already. It's, and it's about time, you know, he starts uh, play, uh, starting to develop his pro career as a basketball player. And I think he showed enough, you know. He he showed enough in his what three season stint in in Ateneo that he can play pro basketball here in the Philippines. Uh, I do want to address something, you know. Uh, and I think uh, Maui, you we were saying this a lot in season eighty six when you were when frustration was building up here in the Boleros podcast <laughs> about the point guard play of the Ateneo Blue Eagles and their play together as a team. Uh, we were calling for more minutes for Gab Gomez. And and I think some of our uh, commenters, our subscribers, and a ton of uh, alumni also were also saying, uh, Gab Gomez is not going to make any, any difference to this struggling Ateneo team. I mean, he's not that good of a player. I mean, we weren't saying that he's a star player and he and Coach Tab should play him. The, we, the reason we were calling for Gab Gomez to play more because he offers something that is much needed in that Ateneo team last season. We were shooting, di ba? Di ba, naman yung sinasabi natin, eh, di ba? There was obviously a lack of spacing involved in that Ateneo offense and Gab Gomez is a shooter. Now, I don't think he's that good of a point guard. I mean, he was serviceable as a backup to Fort Ski in season, eight, in season 85. And actually, ako na, Hanga nga ako that he was able to convert himself into a point guard. Remember, when he started in season 84, he was playing as a shooting guard. Diba? He wasn't a point guard in season 84. So, ako, nagulat talaga ako na he transitioned himself into a point guard. I mean, you given his size, I think it was the right move for him. And while he's not that uh, efficient as a playmaker, he, does, he, uh, he doesn't handle the ball clearly as well as the other guards on Ateneo. He does shoot it very well. So, uh, I l- and to those saying that he wasn't able to develop under Coach Tab, again, he started out as a shooting guard and made himself into a point guard. And I think that comes a lot with coaching and what Coach Tab was able to build in him. He was, he was, he finished the game in game three of season 85. Diba? So, I think Crucial that's... Shannon. Crucial Yeah, he was, he Shannon. hit four threes. <laughs> yeah. So, Diba? His strength was shooting and he gave shooting in Game 3 of Season 85. I, I will always remember him for that. Uh, his hot shooting in in Game 3. It's sad that he was injured towards the end of Season 86 and that's how he ended his Ateneo career. But uh, I'm all just salute for Gab Gomez. And as I said, this, this was definitely the right move. Maui or Sam? Yeah, uh, just to I add, just Gab, to add the sorry, Maui. Okay, just go. sorry, just to add. Naalala ko din, speaking of Gab Gomez being a shooter, I remember the first significant game that he played, he also hit like three or four threes. Parang, sino ba tong Gomez na to? Parang puro tres yung ano. I remember that was like first round of the season or something. But anyway, uh, Maui, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I think just to add to Gab, uh, salute to Gab Gomez. Uh, I think nag peak lang talaga siya nung season 85 and uh unfortunately he wasn't able to build it up nung season 86 uh whether it was injuries or whether coach Tabi really preferred to play Espinosa and Brown over him will will never know completely uh but uh a lot of players from Ateneo surprised when they get to the pros uh you see players like Tyler Tio becoming a star for Converge uh Tyler Tio was also burned in the bench uh because of Benangel Phoenix ata si Tyler Tio, Maui. Phoenix. Phoenix. Yeah. Phoenix. <laughs> Phoenix, sorry. Phoenix, yeah. Phoenix. Uh, but it's not the end for Gab Gomez. Uh, he's 24 years old. He's finally getting to the pros. He's gonna play sa MPBL. I think si Sam mentioned that a while ago. Uh, if I read it correctly, sa Iloilo siya maglalaro. Uh, J.B. Avelosa recruited him. Uh, so I'm hoping that he surprises in the MPBL. Uh, remember a player like Aaron Black. Uh, he was also buried on the bench. He did good in the MPBL, uh, really dominated. So I'm hoping that uh, Gab Gomez will, able, will be able to showcase his talents and eventually get to the pros. Uh, that's it. Uh, I think uh, 
it's very justified why he left. Uh, the entrance of Jared by his age and uh, just how season 86 panned out. Is really, this movie is really in the right direction for him. I think he has to move on. And uh, all we can do is really say good luck. And it was a pleasure seeing him play for the Ateneo Blue Regans. Sam? Yeah, yun yung biggest what if, eh, no? yung season 86. Because he did get injured. We knew that. That's why for a certain part of the season, he wasn't playing. But we thought he was healthy already and he still wasn't playing. So yun yung parang people couldn't figure it out and we kept talking about it. So it was just siguro anticlimactic the way he ended his career in the UAP in Ateneo. But definitely he will be remembered. He will be a legend for that performance in Game 3. And he Ateneo couldn't have won without his hot shooting then nung season 85-9. So, we wish him all the best. So, from the old guys to young guys coming into college, let's talk about uh, the Adamson Stars that won the championship nung juniors, UAAP juniors. Unfortunately, we were talking about this now. We were saying we're hoping that all these Adamson high school stars would join the Adamson seniors team, but so far, two out of those seniors or graduates from the high school team have decided to take their talents to another to another I don't know um league which is the NCAA so uh Gab your favorite si Bonsalida is going to the N- uh the defending champion San ah, sorry sorry tama San Beda tama San Beda Red Lions and then si Jean Carillo one of their wings is joining the CSB Blazers so um, siguro, let's start with you again, Gab, uh, since favorite mo si Bonzalida. Uh, what do you think about this move for Bonzalida and for Jean Carillo? Uh, well, I'm happy for them. I think they're gonna get minutes. Uh, they're definitely talented enough. Uh, Bonzalida is entering a championship culture under Yuri Escueta. Uh, I think he's a type of guy that Coach Yuri will like. Diba? Uh, a guy who will, uh, isn't afraid to do the dirty work, grabs offensive rebounds like a beast. So maybe like a beast like Calvin Abueva, perhaps. Diba? He could develop into something like that. He has a size for it. He has the makings of an outside shot. He's shown that ability, whether he can hit it consistently, can uh, we'll see. But I'm happy that he's going there. As as well as for Gene Carillo, I I love Gene Carillo. Uh, his uh, wing ability, I, I do think that he can make it, it, it in the seniors division. However, for Adamson, uh, this is kind of sad for me because I really thought Yun that Adams lang. could have used these two guys. You know? Definitely. Two, two tall wings. Uh, guys who can defend multiple positions, can run the floor, and in the case of Bonsarida, can crash the boards, can hustle, can you can, you can defend the best guy on the opposing team. Remember, you, you, this guy was the main guy on Collins Akoe. In that in, 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 in that final series against the NU Bullpups. He was the guy guarding Collins. Oh, just, if we, imagine my own. And he didn't foul out in any of the three games. So you know that you know, that, you know, that this guy has some defensive chops. As well as I think he was the lifeblood of for this team in all of their wins, especially in the fourth quarter when they were when he was grabbing all of those offensive rebounds. So I Ako, sayang itong dalawang players to. I don't know why they didn't go to Adamson. I, I don't know why Coach Nash uh, allowed them to leave. Maybe that's, that's not the right word. Or uh, did not think that they were better in Adamson. No? They could have used these two. I mean, Adamson used a ton of guard-heavy lineups. Maybe that's how Coach Nash likes to run things. But I... I think they could have used the, just some tall wings to to go in there. I mean, these are tall, promising wings. I think they could have used them. Sayang lang. Sayang lang. They're pretty talented. <laughs> Maui, Sam. 
let me just let me just say, Gav, though, um, I don't think it was it had anything to do with Coach Coach Nash. I'm sure Coach Nash would have loved to have them, but look at the programs that they joined. It's San Beda and CSB, two of the top programs in the NCAA. I think we know why they joined that. Um, maybe they decided to join that over Adamson. So definitely better funded programs, I would say. So hopefully, uh, hopefully the bigger stars um, that haven't committed yet will join the Adamson seniors team. Yun ang, yun ang neck. We don't, so, we don't know. Wala pang balita. Yun ang dalawa. Si Garcia. Uh, <laughs> the boy. Uh, Maui. Yeah, uh, I think Sigab mentioned it mostly. Uh, it's a big blow to Adamson because anytime you lose players from your juniors division that you could use in your seniors division, in my opinion, saya. Because iba yung homegrown talent, as they say. Uh, they play a different style of basketball because they're invested into the program. Uh, I think that's you can see that in homegrown players. Who decide to to go to college also from the from where they came from the high school. Uh, so we'll have to see what happens. Uh, I think this is an indication, as you mentioned, Sam, talaga ng how hot college recruitment is here in the Philippines right now. Not just in the UAAP, but also in the NCA. Actually, if we also have if we also covered the NCA, it I think they have had a crazy off season similar to the NCA. Uh, Similar to the UAAP, uh, I think that speaks volumes on how how people have put a premium on college basketball. Does not look good on the PBA again. Uh, the 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 rich guys just prefer to fund college programs now. Uh, it's also why I think Sun Chambers entered FEU. Why Alaska could potentially be that partner, and also why the strong group is uh, active both in the UAAP. In the NCA, I think with UE and Letran, uh, this is just a classic case of how college recruitment has gone crazy and crazy and crazier this off season. I don't think we've seen the last of this this off season. As you guys mentioned, there are still a few marquee players who haven't uh, committed. Uh, were committed. Uh, we haven't seen Naveen or some of the insiders say where these players are going. Uh, it's still a long off season. Uh, we'll probably get to know more soon since the the, the yung, yung preseason tournaments natin, both the Pinoy Liga, uh, which is starting on April 6, as Cab mentioned, and Phil Oil is on the way. Uh, but as we've seen during previous off seasons, anything can happen. Uh, diba si, si Hobilia has committed even to his second college in the NCA. I think he decided to move in another direction. So players can still change their minds. Anything can still happen this off season. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, much like last off season, na meron pa rin mga pasabog until the end, until we reach the season. Uh, we were talking off air kanina about some players playing Pinoy Liga uh, that we did. We're, we're not seeing them right now with the same team. So maybe we see some of those guys announce that they're going to another school, but. It's crazy. Uh, anything can still happen talaga this off-season. I think this is the prime, medyo like prime time na tayo because we have the NBTC, Pinoy Liga, and, and some of the other preseason tournaments. Uh, we get to see new names. We get to see people probably change their minds when some of the other players commit. So, yeah. Sayang lang for me yung, yung that they lost to homegrown talent. Uh, I'm hoping that they get Garcia, specifically Garcia, commit pa rin to Adamson because as Gab mentioned, si Coach Nash, Nash really knows how to to utilize a very good point guard. And I think Garcia would fit in nicely considering that Jerome Lastimosa played out in last year niya. And some of the some of their guards are also also graduated. Uh, we'll see, Sam. Yeah, so pretty much mentioned everything. I think that's what we're waiting for for Adamson. It would be really good to see Adamson compete again and be competitive and perfect talaga si Garcia because because of na Jerome Lastimosa is leaving and they do have a competitive team. Ah. Kahit na wala si Jerome Lastimosa last year, 
Um, I did underrate them. I thought they wouldn't be do so well, uh, but they they out. I for me, I think they out outperformed um, expectations and almost made it to the final four. So it's not like they're joining a really bad team. No? So for me, if you're a player that wants to win, Adamson is actually an attractive team. So there must be other. Obviously, there are other. Um, ano ba? other things that people would consider for them to join the team. So that's what we're waiting for, as you mentioned, Maui. Um, hopefully, we'll hear more about them. Uh, one last thing uh, before we go. So it's it's a very short episode. But uh, I remember in our previous episode, there was a comment na fan na they wanted us to talk more about La Salsana. Uh, and merong merong news ish. So that's my question to you guys. Um, si Navs mentioned. I I think it was a spin article. Sorry, I saw a spin article, but maybe si Navs then tweeted it. Na KQ wasn't part of the D League team of Lasal. Um, he wasn't part of the roster. Obviously, there are a number of reasons why he. Didn't join. He doesn't need to join. Um, probably Lasal wants to feel the younger guys. But my question to you guys is: Is this news? Is this news? So that's KQ sa roster ng Lasal. <laughs> I think Maui, the whole of season, na, the whole of season KQ the was. The off season. We're down. gonna talk about this, guys. Diba? We don't. We still don't. I mean, I mean personally, uh. I, ako, when I speak to some of my LaSalle friends, they don't know if Kevin Chambao is indeed coming back really for season 87. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, yung KQ is playing mind games. I think if you... I I, I was actually able to see yung Instagram ni KQ and I think he's playing somewhere. Pero parang ano lang, leisurely lang. I think he's, 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 he's in the Philippines but he's playing in the province, I think. Practicing maybe... Uh, also saw rumors that uh, KBL teams are looking to get bigger size uh, Filipino players. So uh, it's I think si Kevin Chambao and si Carl Tamayo are two players to watch out for. They can potentially be players that the KBL will get. Uh, yung B League will definitely be. Will I don't think the B League will get any players anytime soon. Uh, medyo I think they're they, they yung season is really underway and changing imports is not the right time. But, uh, baka ito yung pasabog talaga ng off-season. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to be honest. Uh, I think that KQ is really ready to go pro. Uh, I think yung performance na nung FIBA World also, uh, especially showed this na is properly pro ready already. But, but, uh, KQ is, KQ has really been teasing us a lot this off-season and I'm just waiting to see what will happen, to be honest. Uh, I'm actually leaning towards that maybe he's leaving kasi Lasal is looking to repeat as the league champion and he's not there. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of news also about Kevin Chambao and Kopex Robinson for a while now. So we'll just have to wait and see. Gab? Uh, yung baka si KQ yung gusto lang yan ng followers, pare. Uh, gusto niya ng mga subscribers sa Twitter, ay, mga followers sa Twitter account or sa Instagram. Kaya ang dami yung mga teasing posts para ma- may mag-training siya. Ang galing eh. Ang galing niya mag-hype. Eh. <laughs> diba? That's a very good strategy. Diba? Si Mojis ang gamit niya. Diba? Madalas si Mojis ang gamit pa niya kaya hindi mo talaga diba? na crypto. Kaya... Yun talaga, di ba? Parang sobra open-ended ng mga tweets niya. Parang meant for interpretation, left for interpretation talaga. So, di ba? Kung ikaw, mag-subscribe ako, baka kung anong next i-announce ni KQ. Na ako, if I were a LaSalle fan, I would not be as worried that he wasn't in the D-League lineup because last season, LaSalle used the D-League simply as a uh, developmental league for their younger players. Uh, the, the main guys barely even played in the D-League last season. Uh, their, their point guard for the Final Four or and even in the finals was, I think, see si Prince Alao, who's, who's mysteriously not in the lineup. Maybe he's not, he's not in, the Lasal, yung, yung in the Lasal anymore. And a lot of their uh, bench guys and role players. So, 
Uh, it's not as worrying for me if KQ was not lined up here, was not part of the roster for this PBA D League. Um, as of right now, he still said that he's coming back and he hasn't turned, he hasn't um, taken his word back from that. So for Lasal, right now, he's still gonna play yung next season. Well, and ako rin, I've been following mga videos ni KQ Maui. And ang unang tinanong ko is, hindi ba second sem ngayon? Hindi nag-aaral to. Dahil naman yung oras. <laughs> yung, yung... <laughs> diba? He's, he's everywhere. He's playing basketball he's in yeah. Matangas. Eh. He's playing basketball in Visayas, in Mindanao. And I'm like, wow. May mister have... sila, bro. Iba skid nila. Try ah, okay, okay, okay. okay. But, oy, oy. Uh, oy, God, pero... I have to say lang about their comments sa PBA D-Liga. I think they're mistaking it for Pinay Liga. Yung top players na were playing nung finals nung against San Beda during the previous year. Uh, si Kevin Kiyama was actually the MVP sa PBA D-Liga uh, last year. And okay. Vanelli, but you know, in the games I watched of the yeah. D-League, the guys playing were more of the role players. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, pero, pero he's lang, completely uh, out of the lineup. Ngayon, I think yun yung, that's what's causing buzz. Diba? So you can be part oh, of so, the lineup and then parang pinay, pinay liga, diba? teams have a very huge lineup. So some players don't play from game to game. Yeah, that's I true. That's yung big thing, yung roster, big, no? thing about, big thing about PBA D-League now is ang, ang rumor is, I, don't, I can't confirm this because I haven't seen the official roster. I don't know if where to check that. Maybe you can let us know if some of our subscribers where to check official rosters for PBA D-League. But I think yung, yung, yung buzz is really because he's not even part of the lineup for PBA D-League. It's not like, so he can't play. He, he won't play. So, I don't know. Ah, si, yung si Maui, yung panic scale niya, yung mas mataas eh, for KQ. Ako, okay lang to. I mean, until I see that his name is not on the official roster news in UAP season 87, I'm not gonna panic. So, yun lang para sa akin. But you must worrying for me is how does he have the time to do all of these pickup games, events? Halos every week he has these videos. And I'm like, how? Di ba dapat na school ka, bro? I'm like, ah. Oh. The student in me hurts. Ba hybrid naman. <laughs> hybrid yung class. Oh, ba <laughs> Grabe, wow. Yun lang yung concern ko. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I'm 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 with ano, I'm more with Gab here. Uh, I'm not as worried as Maui although you did make a good point Maui. Malalaki nga yung rosters nila, diba? So you would expect na at the very least they would have listed him. Pero baka ganoon kalaki yung yung pool of talent ng Lasal na para Kiki, wala naming space para sa other players. So, ano, wag mo kaya na Relax ka lang muna. And we we do know na KQ played for the the Gilas team, the ba, recently under coach Tim Cohn. So, he did get to play competitively at a high level. And probably, Lasal is just giving him a break. That's the, like, the more likely scenario that I'm thinking of. Um... The other one, though, na naiisip ko is, uh, as you mentioned, Maui, KQ is uh, pro-ready. KQ is pro-ready. And I'm sure he's getting a lot of like offers from 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 abroad or even locally. Diba? So, baka ano to, this is the KQ parang free agency. Baka may ninegotiate pa siyang terms with Lasal or his team. So, parang, ah, hindi pa natin finalize yung terms. Bayad daw si Baklaan eh. Ah, Horte, so kailangan bayaran din siya. Oh, diba? So we 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 don't know, but I I'm just ano, I'm just speculating, but I I'm, I'm having fun kasi nakikita ko ay mga videos ni KQ like dunking and nasisira yung ring and whatever. Natatakot lang ako na baka may injure siya. So that's the only thing that I'm concerned about. If you're a Lasal fan and you see him like breaking the ring, Medyo kakabahan ako, to be honest. But I'm not as worried as Maui. I'm in the middle in this. So that's it. So to our listeners na nagre-request for Lasal KQ News, pinag-usapan natin si KQ. Ano? So we're gonna be on KQ Watch all throughout until Season 87. Makita natin si KQ nasa roster and he steps on the court. 
We're gonna watch every second, every video of KQ and monitor. Nasaan na ba si KQ ngayon? Ano ba ginagawa niya? And si Gab, concern siya kung active ba ba si KQ sa school. But I'm sure he is. So, um, Hello, to our listeners, uh, to our listeners, um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If meron pa kayong mga naririnig na bali-balita about the UAP, the NCA, and on any other, and your favorite teams, please do let us know. Comment down below. Share your stories. And don't forget, may mga upcoming uh, competitions tayo soon so we can watch the new players or even like the old players uh, compete or play against each other again. So we do have Pinoy Liga this April and all the other competitions coming soon. So watch out for that. We'll definitely talk more about that. That's it for today. Bye-bye. See you.